and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'll be crafting with a new collection from Spellbinders. This one's called Happy Dance and I actually have two die sets combined on this one sheet to the left here. One is called I Dance and the other is called Let's Dance. If you are familiar with any of the previous dancing die sets from Spellbinders, you'll probably recognize this um, mechanic. Basically the premise is that the legs will uh, swing smoothly or freely and the um, person is actually going to be holding something that is uh, comically large in size so that all you can see is that object and not the top of their body. And it's just really, it's adorable just for that alone, but it's fun that you also have this really cute dancing um, mechanic or interaction as well. The swinging is uh, just a lot of fun and a very easy interactive card to create. I'm going to first start off by assembling some of the pieces here. Now, for the legs, I do like to stack this up three thick. So two layers are heavy weight cardstock. It's 120 pound each. And then the topmost layer is just lightweight cardstock, whatever color I want to show pattern paper, etc. That's the legs and you see the hole at the top is how um, the legs will be swinging. And so you'll see me put that together on the card um, a little bit later. But the reason why I like to stack up at least two layers of the 120 pound heavyweight cardstock is so that this piece has some um, has some good weight to it and that's going to help it actually swing more smoothly. You already saw me uh, assemble the beer mug. I like to use a piece of vellum right over top to give it that sort of frosty mug look. And now I'll assemble the coffee cup. Now in each of these two sets, there are a couple different items each that your character can be holding. So on the Let's Dance, you have the beer mug. Let's Dance is the one that comes with the trousers that I'm working on here. So you've got the beer mug and then you've got a prize ribbon. And then on I dance, which comes with the skirt and the sort of the bare legs, we get the coffee cup, which I just assembled, a really large glue bottle and a flower. So you do get some options um, even within one set, but obviously once you have more of these dancing collections, you get many, many more options for um, what your characters can be holding. And of course, you may even have something in your stash that is appropriately sized to, um, to, to work with these as different objects that your character can be holding, especially since there's a lot of freedom and flexibility in terms of how... Um, the actual size because these are these objects are comically large to start with so they don't need to be in scale with the figure um, but each die set also comes with the little hands that you can die cut and um, there is a slit so that you can actually um, make it look like the hands really do wrap around that object today I'm going to be making a slider card and I often use ribbon dies to create my slider mechanism but I wanted to show how you can make a slider without having any special dies. So I have four strips here that are cut to three eighths of an inch tall by five and a half inches wide and one strip that's cut to two inches tall by five inches wide so it's half an inch um, less wide than the narrow strips and I'll take these narrow strips and attach them to flush to the top, flush to the bottom and on the front and the back of my wider strip. These are all um, cut from heavyweight cardstock, 120 pound. My four strips are actually actually three layers of 120 pound cardstock and that's to give some um, a little bit of thickness and that will um, kind of replace the need to use any foam later because often I like to use my low profile foam which is only one millimeter thick 
to just give enough room for anything sliding to comfortably kind of move around. Now I'll cut off uh, my conveyor belt, which is one inch wide or tall when it's uh, correctly oriented, and then uh, 12 inches long. The 12 inches is, is not exact. You just want an, ex an excess of um, 10 inches because the portion that this conveyor belt will wrap around is five inches wide and you need it to go around the front and all the way around, uh, back to the, um, around the back and then back to the front with a little bit of overlap to glue those pieces together. So if you start with 12 inches, then you're gonna have plenty. Um, and then my pull tab is one inch tall by six inches wide. You do, if you prefer, you can make your pull tab exactly five and a half inches so that it, it matches up and is flush with the width of a standard USA 2 size card, which is the size card I'll be making. That's, um, since I'm making a landscape card, it's five and a half wide by four and a quarter tall. The reason why I've extended this beyond the five and a half inches is because I want that tool pull tab to be easily um, accessible so that there isn't cardstock above or below it. So if I were to cut it at five and a half inches wide, I would want to notch out, I would want to die cut or punch out thumb notches from my card base so that the card recipient can actually grab hold onto that um, half circle end more easily. Um, but I prefer to just make a larger envelope if I need to in order to, for um, the envelope to accommodate the extra half inch that the pull tab extends. That way I can just design my card in full. I don't have to worry about that notch um, uh, sort of removing a part of my design and I just find it easier this way. Now I've cut myself some acetate stands. These are actually just from packaging. So if you don't often use or have a need for heavyweight acetate or construction weight acetate, which you can buy. Um, but you know, you just want to still be able to occasionally make cards like these where you might need that more sturdy acetate. And I need a more sturdy acetate because these stands are going to hold my character and the character is going to be swinging on that stand, in fact. So I don't want it to be uh, bending over or flopping over. Um, you can always look for packaging on um, things that you buy that might have a really um, strong, thick plastic. And that's exactly what this is. It's um, And it doesn't even need to be ultra clear or anything. We're going to cover up pretty much all of it so you don't even have to worry about it being a super clear plastic as you can see it's it's very visible on my craft table and um the acetate that i buy i often can't even see it when it's um especially within the mess that i have going on on my craft table so um so that's a, another way to source uh these the acetate for uh creating these stands so we've got the slider mechanism pretty much complete. I already glued down the top of my um, my card, and that's just an embossed panel on some cream cardstock. I'll leave links to everything that I use in the description box below. The embossing folder that I use is actually a slimline embossing folder from Spellbinders, but um, I just embossed twice to get it to emboss the entire width of that five and a half pan uh, inch panel. To attach my pull tab, I did push the conveyor belt all the way to the left so that where it's attached, uh, where the two ends of the conveyor belt are attached, I have um, pushed that all the way to the left so it can't go any further. And then I glued my uh, pull tab there. Then to attach my characters, I just sort of did a dry fit to see how um how close do i want them to be when they meet up in the center and how um how far uh towards each end do they need to be now i didn't mention it um but one of the acetate stands is attached to the front of the conveyor belt 
and the other acetate stand is attached to the back of the conveyor belt. However, you'll see that the legs of both my characters are going to be um, uh, on the front and visible. And that's because the little foam dot that I'm using, it's very thick, it's very dimensional. Um, and so it will have plenty of clearance to um, kind of extend beyond uh, all the front layers. So I, even though that back acetate stand, it's behind a couple of layers of cardstock, but that's okay because that foam um, dot is thick enough to kind of, you know, push the, the uh, legs forward and clear all of that extra cardstock that I've got. Now, when you go to glue this down, you do want to make sure to only put glue where your um, acetate stand that's attached to the back where it doesn't travel. And that's the same from the front. So you see me releasing the um, the paper liner from the double-sided adhesive and only putting liquid adhesive to the right of the stand that's on the front because it doesn't need to travel um, beyond that point. And a little bit to the left because it doesn't need to travel um, beyond that point. So whatever the path is that your acetate stand needs to travel, the golden rule is just to make sure there's nothing that obstructs it. No adhesive, no extra bits of cardstock. Um, you want to make sure that that path is free and clear so that the acetate can move without any obstruction. And so once I've got um, all of that attached, Really, now I can just um, finish off my characters. So I'll pull off the um, little dot here, the paper liner on my glue dot. I do like to use a little bit of um, liquid adhesive because it's going to end up uh, making this a more permanent, strong bond. You want to be careful that, especially near your mechanism, your sliding mechanism, you just want to be careful that that liquid adhesive doesn't ooze beyond where you want it to go um, to the point where it might be obstructing something that needs to slide, something that needs to move. But I always do like to use liquid adhesive on my uh, interactive cards and pop-up cards because if, uh, if it's a fun interaction, you want it to hold up over time and you want um, whoever gets it to, to enjoy playing with it and have and not risk anything kind of falling apart or having to be too precious about it. But basically, um, that's my that's my card complete. And I think it's really it's really fun to see. I think at this angle, you'll be able to appreciate the swinging nature a little bit better. Um, but it's really uh, fun to play with even without the pull tab. But I think by just pulling on this, it does swing the legs naturally. So it's um, it's just fun to do. And plus, you, you kind of see them meeting up in the middle, uh, almost sort of in that sort of clinking of the glasses. I kind of see this as my husband who likes to drink beer and me uh, who likes to drink coffee. So um, just really adorable. I, I love um, this new dancing collection. I'll have a couple more projects to share. And so I'll link to those at the end of this one after I've posted them. If you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I publish them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Thanks so much. Bye.